Good evening, participants. Welcome to our ongoing program. We will be starting the program in few minutes' time. We are admitting the participants now. Good evening, CPR Environmental Education Center, Chennai, welcomes you to our ongoing program, Our Environment, Our Lifeline. Today, the topic is traditional water harvesting systems of India. Introduction. Rainwater is the only copious and clean source of water, but its distribution is neither uniform nor assured in all parts of the country. India receives about 400 million hectare meters of rain per year over an area of 329 million hectares. The rainfall ranges from as low as 100 millimeter in the Thar Desert to 15,000 millimeter in the Northeast. Despite being crisscrossed by a complex network of rivers, vast stretches of India have neither river nor lake to depend on. The history of India tells us that floods, droughts or both were a perennial occurrence. If the overflow of rivers and streams in spate could be redirected and stored, the water could be used during drought. Even rainfall as low as 100 millimeter, if harvested properly, can meet the drinking water needs of the people. India's rich tradition of water harvesting systems. The practice of harvesting rainwater dates back to Vedic times when the need to create water sources that would remain both clean and provide plentifully was recognized. Rivers were the obvious location of civilization and different civilizations utilized them in different ways. Early people cut channels, diverted rivers and formed their regions. Wells had been dug in the cities of the Indus Saraswati Valley by the 3rd millennium BC while the Great Bath was probably a water storage tank. The Indus Valley cities had excellent systems of water harvesting and drainage. Dola Vira laid out on a slope between two stormwater channels is an example of sophisticated engineering. The excavations at Harappa and Mohanjadaro reveal deep rectangular constructions that were probably the earliest tanks built in India. Water harvesting down the ages, 3rd millennium BC, dams built of stone rubble were found in Balochistan and Kutch, 300 to 1500 BC. Indus Saraswati civilization had several reservoirs to collect rainwater runoff. Each house had an individual well, 321 to 291 BC. Archaeological evidence for dams, lakes 
an irrigation system in the time of Chandragupta Maurya's rule, third century BC. Kaudilya's Arthasastra mentions irrigation using water harvesting systems. First century BC, Sringaverapura near Allahabad had a sophisticated water harvesting system using the floodwaters of the Ganges. Second century AD, Grand Anaikat or Kalanai built by Karikala Chora across the river Kaveri to divert water for irrigation is still functional. 11th century AD, King Boja of Bhopal built the largest artificial lake, 65,000 acres in India, fed by streams and springs. 12th century AD, Raja Tarangini by Kalana describes a well-maintained irrigation system in Kashmir. Ancient engineering feat, a tank excavated at Singavirapura near Allahabad, Uttar Pradesh, dates back to the first century BC. Excavations have unearthed a fully brick-lined tank that is 800 feet long, 60 feet wide and 12 feet deep. The water first passed through two deep earthen tanks where the silt settled down and escaped through the upper end of the settling tank. The inlet to the main tank ended in steps with curved walls to slow down the water. Several wells were also dug in the bottom of the tank to ensure adequate water supply in the dry months. The technology of water harvesting, rainwater runoff and the flood water from rivers were all harvested. Water harvesting systems were located in the open to capture rainwater where it fell in the path of a stream or its runoff beside rivers to catch the flood water. The design and structure of each system was decided by the terrain and rainfall pattern of the region. Hence, each eco zone of India had unique techniques for harvesting water. In the hills and mountainous regions, simple engineering structures were used to divert the water into channels that fed the fields. These structures became more sophisticated and much bigger when the streams turned to rivers. In the arid and semi-arid regions where the streams are more seasonal, the diversion channels first led the water to a storage structure like a tank for later use. In the floodplains, several unique systems to control and harness the flood waters were devised. In the coastal areas where there is danger of river water turning saline, several ingenious ways came up to regulate the flow of saline water. In regions with good groundwater aquifers, dug wells with innovative methods to lift the water were in use. In areas where rainfall is the only option, people devised methods to literally catch rainwater where it fell. Traditional water harvesting from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. Throughout India, several indigenous ways have been devised to catch and store rainwater for future use. They are known as traditional water harvesting systems. Temple tanks are the main water harvesting system followed in many Indian states which are revered. The water is used for religious and drinking purposes and for 
recharging the ground water aquifers it is the traditional water harvesting systems that have made life possible even in the tar desert the technology and engineering of the traditional water harvesting system differed depending on whether they were to provide drinking water or to be used for irrigation this ensured that people could only collect water manually in small quantities to meet their individual or family's needs trans himalayan region himachal pradesh water from melting snow and ice is the only source of water here the snow and ice melt slowly through the day and water is available in the stream only in the evening the water in the stream was hence led by channel to storage tanks called zinc and used with the next day in the spiti area of himachal pradesh diversion channels called kul were used to bring the melting snows from glaciers to circular tanks from where the water was distributed western himalayas jammu himachal pradesh and uttar pradesh ponds are the main source of drinking water in jammu ponds in the kandi region were dug beside rivers during floods the river water was diverted into them in himachal pradesh a temporary head wall of boulders called kul was constructed across a ravine to divert the waters of natural flowing streams kud through a canal to the fields in uttar pradesh contour channels called guls were used extensively streams are dammed by temporary barriers to divert water into these channels eastern himalayas arunachal pradesh streams are the only dependable source of water here the apatani system of arunachal pradesh was practiced by the apatani tribes the stream water was blocked by constructing a wall of size 2 to 4 meters high and 1 meter thick near forested hill slopes the valleys are terraced into plots separated by 0.6 meter high earthen dams with inlet and outlet channels to the next plot that help to flood or drain the plots as and when required northeastern hill ranges nagaland rainfall and groundwater are the main sources of water in this region but the terrain makes it difficult to capture the surface water natural springs are used for drinking water purposes zabu meaning impounding runoff is practiced in nagaland when rain falls on terraced hill slopes the runoff collects in ponds in the middle terrace brahmaputra valley west bengal this region has many natural depressions along the banks of the brahmaputra and barak rivers dams or ponds were constructed by the bodo tribes of assam to harvest water in the jalpaiguri district of west bengal small irrigation channels called dungs or jambois were used to bring water from streams to rice fields indo gangetic plains bihar the rivers and their flood waters are the main source of water here ahar paini is a traditional flood water harvesting system indigenous to south bihar the ahar 
is the catchment basin embanked on three sides while the fourth side is the natural slope pines are artificial channels start out from the river and meander through fields to end up in an aha tar desert rajasthan and gujarat the tar desert receives very little rainfall hence rain water was captured and stored in ponds and underground tanks tarais or reservoirs were built in the valley between sand dunes by constructing burns at the two ends to collect the rain water individual homes on farms in bikaner built tantras they were round or rectangular underground rooms that functioned as water tanks rain water from the roof or terrace were directed towards an opening in the floor which led to the tanka step wells are india's most unique contribution to architecture they are called wav or wavadi in gujarat and bavolis or bavadis in rajasthan and northern india mata bhavani's wav at ahmedabad built in the 11th century is one of the earliest step wells while the rani wall queen's well at patan built during the late 11th century is the grandest the dada harir's wall at ahmedabad and the octagonal well at adalaj are some of the finest examples of step wells kunds in western rajasthan and gujarat harvest rain water for drinking in the sandy tracks of the tar desert kuis or berries were deep pits dug near tanks to collect the seepage they were also used to harvest rain water in areas with scanty rainfall kadin ba dora is a long earthen embankment that is built across the hill slope of gravelly uplands it is indigenous to jaisalmer region central highlands madhya pradesh the region is full of ravines and valleys the natural undulations provide for creation of wells and lakes there are small medium and large lakes the chandel of kings 851 to 1545 ad of bandalgan madhya pradesh established a network of several hundred tanks that ensured a satisfactory level of ground water small earthen check dams called johats were built in rajasthan to capture and conserve rain water improve percolation and ground water recharge eastern highlands assam the hilly country is broken by torrential streams not much is known about the water harvesting systems here a katta is a strong earthen embankment carved at either end built across a drainage line to hold up an irregularly shaped sheet of water deccan plateau maharashtra check dams or diversion weirs called bandaras were built by villages across rivers in maharashtra hard a check dam built across a river on canals to carry water to agricultural blocks with outlets to ensure excess water is removed from the canals ram tech model intricate network of ground water and surface water bodies connected through surface and underground canals 
Deccan Plateau, Andhra Pradesh. In Andhra Pradesh, large tanks called Cherubu were the main water source. Chain tanks were built in hilly regions with wide valleys. Canals that take the overflow from one canal to the next canal connected to them. Western Ghats, Kerala. Surangam, a special water harvesting structure, is found in Kasaragod district in northern Kerala. A horizontal well was dug in hard laterite rock formations until water was found. The water seeped out of the hard rock and flowed out of the tunnel where it was collected in an open pit. Panamkeni, the Kurumba tribe, a native tribe of Vayanad, uses wooden cylinders as a special type of well which are made by soaking the stems of toddy palms and immersed in groundwater springs. Western coastal plains, shallow wells called virdas were dug in low depressions called gills or tanks. They are found all over the bunny grasslands, a part of the great ram of Kutch in Gujarat. They were built by the nomadic Maldaris who identified these depressions by studying the flow of water during the monsoon. The Virdas yield sweet potable fresh water in a region known for its saline water. Eastern Coastal Plains, Tamil Nadu Uranis are very similar to Aries. Uranis are much smaller and are shallower than Aries. It catches rainwater and the water stored by them is more preferably used for drinking. An Aries or tank system is one of the oldest forms of water conservation systems in Tamil Nadu. Kudi Maramattu is a traditional practice whereby stakeholders participate in the maintenance and management of the water reservoir. Andaman and Nicobar Islands, the Shomban tribals of the great Nicobar Island made full use of the undulating terrain to harvest water. In the lower parts, buns of hard bullet wood were built and water collected in the pits called jack wells. A full length of split bamboo was placed along a slope. Rainwater flowed through it and collected in the pits. Bamboo pipes were placed under trees to collect the dripping water from the leaves. Advantages of harvesting water. When a small water body or so is created, there are several benefits. The standing water percolates into the ground and recharges the water table. Wells in the surrounding areas have plenty of good water. Green cover increases in the surrounding areas. Soil erosion is reduced. Silting of rivers is reduced. Floods and runoff get controlled. Please write your suggestions and feedback to our official email ID cpreec at gmail.com. Kindly subscribe us on YouTube, CPREEC Chennai, to get notification. To join the next meeting, link will be shared shortly to your email ID and WhatsApp. Good evening. For the remaining time, the session is open. Please unmute yourself and talk to us.
can i talk yes sir yes sir uh, good evening to you your talk was really inspiring and you have covered the whole of india uh, in the various parts and even found the various names that were employed in those days I simply enjoyed your talk sir but my one small question that had occurred that all these examples of uh, water harvesting master water storing how is it that the whole nation has abandoned them and uh, looks as though that uh, the water uh, management has uh, come out of us uh, in the in the recent uh, century or so no sir it's a very good uh, question i am answering here and uh, basically the uh, kudi maramat system was there in tamil nadu where uh, every village uh, has participated in the maintenance of the areas and tanks and once it has gone to the government it was public uh, public welfare department public works department pwd and the maintenance of tank gone to that particular department you know once it has gone to the government uh, the, uh, we are a uh, little bit uh, procedures are there and all those things are not followed properly that is how the uh, and also the encroachments took place a lot and uh, it has happened in tamil nadu you can see a lot of uh, area encroachments and uranies are all gone and filled up and uh, the very old your uh, uh, nugambakam where valluvar kotam stays it is not a uh, it is a, once a big tank so all these areas why the chennai is flooding now to this, this small rainfall also it is because all the water bodies which were earlier in west mamalam or kodambakam or nugambakam has been filled up with all this uh, uh, materials and constructed all this dead block and that is one of the reason and as you suggested in other parts it is still maintained say for example all the rainwater system that the temple tanks is the best example when we talk about uh, the uh, rainwater harvesting system traditional harvesting systems which we followed in southern india and uh, this of course is very good and once you talk about modern technologies and i mean uh, engineering structures i don't think that the traditional system will uh, definitely match the modern modern technology can yes they dig lot of dams and otherwise but that cannot be a system where it replenishes the groundwater table it can store reservoirs can store a huge water and it can be used for a thing and you can see that metro dam or whatever dam it is not there fully only if it is rainfall it is there but groundwater or rainwater harvesting in uranies and uh, columns in uh, villages it's still there where it is becoming a percolation pond and all those things is happening this is what we feel is the traditional harvesting system is much more a uh, bigger where the uh, dams and uh, reservoirs cannot do it thank you very much uh, the question looks as though the uh, sir uh, can you be a little bit louder, louder sir louder. Louder. we are not able to uh, oh, not audible sir uh, thank you very much sorry sorry i was holding my phone a little distance so probably you didn't hear one thing that comes out of this discussion uh, uh, sir is that uh, uh, what we call the distributed generation in yes. in one uh, electrical engineering uh, looks to be the kind of uh, capacity storing in the remote areas and using it for the local purpose in small ways uh, instead of getting into some major uh, super generation uh, which is uh, a converse of that Yes. probably that could have uh, both could continue maybe if both the systems continue together it will be the that uh, the distribution system will also work and the mass generation will also work yes sir uh, yes, thank sir. you very much i am unable to i am unable to think of uh, any better way than continuing the old system which looks to have been abandoned uh, due to various reasons maybe some little government setup come um, but if individual stake initiative like uh, cpr or other organizations i don't think uh, for example i have had some occasion to work with the department of water management in uh, uh, chennai and there is a lot of uh, energy and thinking in the thing but only when it comes to action it uh, gets into a little depression thank you very much i enjoyed the talk i'm sorry i missed the earlier ones today i thought i will sit down and hear you all and uh, the the speaker who has collected so much of information i didn't get your name sir sorry to Uh, I, but it was fantastic how you have collected all this data all over the world for centuries yes, salute yes. to you and wish you all the best thank you continue thank you very much for the participation sir and uh, the uh, questions was very really good and uh, we hope that uh, in future also we'll have this type of programs and we'll uh, look for your valued participation 
thank you for calling me <laughs> thank you sir right bye can i can i leave can i leave or is there are there many more questions uh, as if uh, uh, no, uh, nobody has asked any questions and i think uh, we'll uh, end this session sir thank you thank you very much thank you all participants yeah thank you all we are running short of time so we'll be ending the session for today thank you for your participation